where are all the black American girlies? There's a major gap in content and it needs to be filled. Every time I see a black girly who from a professional career to a professional content creator, she's got a wall full of PR, brand deal, brand trip, etc. But it's just like, where are the girls who are my girl? From the dude, the Latino dude, trying to co-bar his way into our history. And then he put a beat behind it. And somebody was in comments, man, you put a beat on it? He's like, yeah, the, yeah, because I'm trying to, you know, show there's this correlation. They really want us, they want to be us so bad. And then you see the Asian dude getting the ethnic haircut. Do not let anybody tell you that you are not A1, that you are not the trendsetters that you're not the apex of culture. Don't let anybody disrespect you, B1 family. Do not, do not, do not let that happen. That dude's all the way over. I think that's Japan. And you trying to look like us. That Latino's trying to, that is the, I don't know what that is. And he's trying to, he's trying to cobar his way into hip hop history. So bad. They want to be us so bad when it comes to a benefit but not dealing with the trials and tribulations that we go through every day. Once again, black Americans are at the forefront of conversation as always. From those podcast airhead people to that airhead woman over there in Britain. My definition of obsession is an uncontrollable urge of wanting to be in possession of something that you cannot or someone or some things. That's not even the fact of why they're so obsessed anymore. I figured out exactly what it is. Why is it that the entire world is obsessed with black Americans and then try to gaslight us as if they are not? And the answer is it's merely because of control. They cannot control our existence because they can't determine how it is that we continue to be. Be kind, be graceful, be ingenuitive, be powerful be intelligent beyond means, be resilient and still have the urge to continue to want to be no matter the circumstances that are thrown our way. Because to them, our existence shouldn't be, which is why they try to script everything that belongs to us away. You all don't know where you're from. You all are uh, black on black violence. You all have no culture. You all are improperly educated. There's a uh, influencer, I don't know if he wants to be called out, I absolutely love Adonis because he stays on their head asking them questions because they think they know everything about us. Well, this particular video, he's asking one of the guys, do you know why Kendrick Lamar made they not like us? The guy really cannot give an answer. It starts rambling. So at one point of the conversation, he says, what do you mean? He says, black culture. The British guy says, no, you all, you all didn't create that. You all did not create black culture. And so he then asks him, what is British black culture? can't say black culture without black Americans because then it would not exist. So the problem is control or the obsession is the lack of control that they have over us. The fact that none of these other people are on the premise of our mind bothers them. To the point to where everybody else in the world continues to say, well, we're going to bully them until they find a problem with themselves. And lo and behold, what they've already known is that we've never been the problem. So when you're never the problem, what happens? 
they'll always try to create one. Another thing black Americans on why they absolutely hate us is because the lie that they told us is the lie that they told everyone else and they believed it. And when they finally got a taste of what we were actually like, and it wasn't that lie, they convinced themselves that this could not be true. That's why they absolutely hate us. Because they believed the lie that they were told, and we never did. So they continuously try to convince themselves that we are exactly what they told them that we were. You know what I find funny? Is that, that anybody else in America can say stuff like, I am Nigerian American and I get to speak on my heritage, I'm not black. I am Haitian American, and I get to speak on my heritage, I'm not black. But the moment a black American says, I'm a black American and I'm from America, you don't have any, you don't know where you're from. Never in my household was anything bad said about different places in Africa. I was always informed that that was home. We're the only culture, according to the rest of the world, that can't be proud of who we are because you all don't believe that we are that. And another thing, black Americans are not built on hatred. Hatred is not something that we exude. Hatred is a manipulation tactic used to destroy and force others to forget their own skill sets and power source. So it's easier for others to harm than it is to help. So those other nations that hate black Americans were provided the tools and the information to study us so they can do more harm than they could help. They had no allegiance to themselves, so of course they wouldn't have allegiance to us. If a virus enters the body before you had a chance to cure it, it now becomes an infection and it spreads. And that's what happened to the others. Because why are you being provided with information on black Americans via music, movies, paperwork, documents you digest that information and you don't even know us that means you were never interested in getting to know us from jump we don't take other people's word we're big on getting to know you because that's why we are always so eager to help because we are helping people nobody has brought us information or taught us in school about other countries deep dive into other countries that's not something that we do but the fact that you all are so interested in us like this is a topic of discussion from the moment you all are born that does not work with us let's make this crystal clear because you all have a hard time of understanding we did not get 400 years of advancement and opportunity. Our oppressors did. So if you're going to do your research, please do it right. We were enslaved for 400 plus years. So every opportunity that you all are saying that we're so lazy and we're supposed to have went into building an entire country. Do you know why you all are able to get those grants and those degrees and those scholarships? Because before... These folks would see the advancement of black Americans. They'd rather give it to you all so we can continue to fail. Now that some of y'all plans are failing without us, like affirmative action, now you want to file a lawsuit. No, no, no. This is what you wanted. This is what you got. Do what black Americans have been doing for years. Deal with it. Assess the situation and learn how to advance from it. Oh, I think y'all are going to absolutely love this one. In the last three to five years, it is now cool to be considered black or in association with blackness as long as you're not black american because for 400 plus years the goal was to eradicate that black gene that black american gene needs to disappear you can have the berry just not blackberry i found it absolutely insane that everybody else can have ownership of black americanism except for black americans it is not an issue until black americans take ownership of what is rightfully ours our lineage our heritage our arts our skills our dna our genes so what's now currently happening is they've decided to take our entire identity and give it to everyone else in the world everybody else can have ownership of it but us we don't know how to terminate them so we're going to give ownership of black to everybody but them and we're going to create the new black they're no longer black they're no longer black americans we we didn't create our own version of what we want black to be and y'all know that is exactly what's happening when we call y'all out on it or when we call them out on it black americans think they own everything no you all don't want us to have ownership of anything including ourselves and that's what makes their blood boil so bad because ours isn't in their screen and now see here we go with this bullshit. now i ain't gotta articulate too well for this one 
I just say it. Anytime I speak on black Americans in a positive light, here I go talking about a dysphoria war. Bitch, that ain't what I, I'm going to be ignorant with this post. That ain't the point of now I'm one of them posts. Y'all consistently speaking on us, and I'm giving explanations on why y'all speaking on us. And when it's time to throw hands, I, we gonna, I'm going to swing on anybody who ain't fucking with us. We're black everywhere. Bitch, I, am I having a conversation about we black everywhere? Or I'm talking about black America. Then here comes the rest of y'all stupid ass. If you only knew what the color black meant. Fuck what y'all talking about. We're talking about we got dropped off at different ports. Ho, I'm talking about black Americans in general. God damn, I can't have a conversation about us with y'all without y'all and y'all broke ass two cents. If your shit popping, then tend to it. You don't like the post to take your ass on. That's not important right now. We gonna motherfucking die. So I'm gonna say what I want to. Death is inevitable. Now take your whole ass on. Now, yeah, see how this sister kept cooking, right? This was like multiple days of her dealing with some silly folk, but she was staying A1 with it. And this next clip explains why what she's saying makes so much sense. We're not the ones who go around jumping on people, uh, cultures and stuff like that. We don't mess with nobody. We really do stay to ourselves until people come over and try to encroach in our space and say, oh, hey, we all together, right? We're all, no, 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 we've done that. We've done enough of we're all together and got nothing for it. Um, we've done enough of helping other people get put on their feet. And once they get put on their feet, it's a big middle finger to us. And then they go about their way and it's mayate, mayate and all kind of, uh, you know, jareers and akadas and all kind of crazy terms that are used against us. So I like what she said. And you see this next clip. We've seen this brother before. Uh, the dude that got pushed into the water by his so-called friends. I want to say this. Black family, quit moving to these all-white neighborhoods. And have your kids in these all-white schools. Do some diversity. Well, it's a better school for who? The numbers are better, but the, you forget there's a culture that comes with it. I hate that. I hate that so much. Oh, it's a better school. What about the school's culture? What about the school's culture? Is it a culture that's been established and ingrained in school since those kids were little, they were babies? And how your child is going to become a part of that without being subjected to microaggressions, maybe macroaggressions? Stop doing it. I, I hate that. That's, I, to me, that's a, a form of cowardice. You're afraid of your children being in a more diverse school because what well, this school don't have to... This school is not real life for black people. These all white schools are not real life for black folk. You're not going to get up that high level where you're surrounded by white folk uh, like that unless you are typically a step and fetch it. Be one. Oh, he's fucking dicing me in the fucking wall. This is why you need to choose your friends carefully. So his so-called friends pushed him into the Louisiana lake knowing that he couldn't swim and watched him struggle for 10 minutes. And only one of his friends can be seen attempting to enter the water before she just leaves him there. And 10 minutes later, people from a nearby restaurant who hear the commotion come outside to help. His name is Christopher Gilbert. He's 26 years old and his friends just watched on as he was rushed to a hospital, pronounced brain dead, and almost all of his organs failed by the time he reached the hospital. It was there that he spent 72 hours on a ventilator, and now he's at the point where he can't speak, his lungs are at 20%, and he relies on life support. His friends tried to lie and even say that they were just messing around until one admitted to pushing him into the lake. Thankfully, he's doing a lot better now, but his family is demanding that arrest be made in the case for at least the person that intended to push him into the lake. His parents are devastated that his friends who knew he couldn't swim could do something like this, but as the investigation continues, I'll keep you guys updated. Am I the only one who saw this on their For You page today? I'm not black, I'm Africa. Is that not black? No, 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 no. Oh, it's I a big it difference. Is. You know what I'm saying? I came in a plane, they came in chains. Yeah, I'm passenger in their cargo. <laughs> Why are you, you laughing? Oh, that's racist. That's, that's racist. racist. That's racist. No. That's racist. That's racist. You're racist. Now, I don't got a problem with the woman. You know, she laughed at there, right? Cool. But the joke, though? But the joke, though? You didn't come here. You fled here. You fled here. I, I, I would never, 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 never let a tether get away with no bullshit like that. I'm sorry to curse family, but, you know, over the years... Although, we just can't get right on it. A lot of that came because 
tethers were in the mix and we didn't realize it. Right? That wasn't the separation of cultures. We didn't understand it. We were trying to be nice and kind and endearing and inviting and all these other things. And we just kept getting slapped in the face for it. And I refused to let that happen any longer. Now, these next set of clips. Now, some of you might know more about this than I do, but there's been clips saying that of life started here in America and then moved to Africa. But we know about Pangea and all that stuff. So I put your tinfoil kufi on for this. Put your tinfoil kufi on for the next couple clips. And then comment your thoughts below. And remember, family, search is still available. Africa stole our history because Caucasian people gave it to them so that we wouldn't want to claim America and get back on the throne and rule the planet. Everybody has become accustomed to the indigenous peoples of America being asleep. They've gotten used to us. This whole fake story about black people coming from Africa. We're not, life didn't even start in Africa, all right? We sent people to Africa. Atlantis, go back to the Greeks, who got their story from the Egyptians who were in Africa. America is the original Egypt, and we created the Egypt over in Africa. This is the grandmaster, the supreme grandmaster of the Rosicrucians. I shouldn't even be doing this right now. It's all in the book. This is Haru or Heru, who they call Horus. That's a falcon, the peregrine falcon, which you can only, this isn't, is native to America, North America. Egypt had camels, right? Camels are native to North America. This is Anubis, one of the first Egyptian deities that they had, all right? Over there that they had. That dog isn't from over there. It's from here. North America, this dog is not from Central or South America. The Xolo Quintili is originally from North America. Why is it being used as a deity over there in Africa? If we had it first. Poisodon, let's go to what the Greeks were saying. Let's not just deal with what the Egyptians said. The Greeks, they said Atlantis is Poisodon. So I'm looking this stuff up as he's talking. He's actually correct. The first camel species evolved in North America 44 million years ago. Stay with me. The hairless terrier is native to North America. And he's saying Pos Poseidon, because he said he was poisoned. I'm like, poisoned? the hell is goddamn boys die? Poseidon. <laughs> but but we're going to stay with this brother. All right, let's, let's go. Let's lock in. And we know they tell us that Poseidon is the one who created horses. He was the first person to use horses. Horses are indigenous to America, North America. All of these roads go right back to North America. I understand what people are arguing about. These are facts that anybody can go find right now. Moors go into Africa, conquer it. They start Kush. They start uh, Morocco, ETC. We go into Egypt, as y'all call it today, as colonists. And we conquer the Pelasgian people who were there first. And we take over. And this is what, when you start seeing the pyramids, this is what I keep telling y'all. It was people there. They'll tell you, oh, it was people in Egypt, you know, this far back. But then they say, well, the pyramids start at this point because them niggas didn't know nothing. We're the ones that built the pyramids. And if you want verification, go throughout the Americas. It's pyramids all over this boy. So let's stop with the cap. The people in Africa did nothing until we sent people over there. All right? We built those pyramids those people come from us all right not the other way around we rap everybody want to rap it's for a reason we've been the cultural trendsetters all right we started religion all right 
We started culture. We started nationality. We started all of this. I don't know why people won't just put respect on our name. Yes, I do. They're comfortable being us. They're com living in our shadow, acting as if they're us, and everybody want to pigeonhole our truth. In fact, it, it, there is no our truth. Our truth is the truth. And they want to try to hold it for their own benefit. So the transatlantic slave trade managed to transport 12 million people in a span of 350 years with an average of 400 people per trip, with each trip taking about two months, meaning that they would have to transfer around 35,000 people per year in a highly coordinated constant flow of ships from Africa to North America without error for 350 years with factors like weather, navigation challenges, ships maintenance and repair. On average, ships lasted 10 to 20 years, mortality rates being 10 to 50% per trip, conflicts and piracy. Only about 70 to 75% of the ships that made that trip ever completed their voyages successfully, meaning that this process was fraught with interruptions and challenges and far from smooth and inefficient. Taking into consideration all these factors, would make this process last over 5,000 years. This would mean there would have to be 86 trips per year that went flawlessly. 86 ships carrying 34,000 people, 35,000 people flawlessly. Now, given all the problems that we just went over, this would make the probability of 86 ships flawlessly making it to the Americas from Africa at point zero 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 one eight percent the probability of maintaining such a perfect success rate is nearly zero but the transatlantic slave trade managed to transport 12 million people in 350 years flawlessly when it theoretically would take 5,000 years got it african americans are not from africa we're not even from africans in fact the story is in reverse the africans come from the african americans this is why everybody copies everything the african americans do makes sense doesn't it the garden of eden is the newest version of this story by the way it talks about the origin of humanity and it ain't about africa it's about america and how can we prove this because the Garden of Eden is based off the story of Atlantis. For those of you, it, it's all in my book. But this is the thing. The story of Atlantis was written by the Greeks. Atlantis is their ancient name for America. And they said it was a land in the West. All right. Now, why is this important? It is important because the Greeks, who are cousins of the Egyptians, by the way, also in my book, you come to find out they this story is Egyptian. So for people saying that I'm making this up, the Egyptians gave this story to the Greeks. So the Greeks didn't even make it up. It's an Egyptian story. And when we dig further into the Egyptian book of the dead, I'm giving you all the sources. Get to digging, please, for the naysayers. So when it's all said and done, does the math man. It doesn't make sense because a part of me is like, it makes a bit of sense. And now that we further explain why there's so much vitriol for us, why there's such an attack from all groups all around, not that we want to be touted definitely. Black American, bow, kiss the ring, and the boot. We, we, that's not how we get down. And maybe that's the reason why this is vitriol is because we don't get down like that. We don't puff our chest up and stick our nose in the air. We just try to go, hey, what's going on? What's going on, homie? What's good? What's happening, chief? How you doing, big dog? What's going on with you? How you doing, man? Look, look at you. Looking good. I'm going to tell on you. Because we're so cool, we're so suave, we're so debonair. We just flow with the energy around us. And we do it effortlessly. 
Maybe that's the reason why they hate us so much because they not like us. No, I'm not. You just said that you're not African American. You're Black American. Yeah. Like, what do you call Jamaicans? What? Huh? First of all, your background loud as hell. Where you at? Oh, my bad. Yeah, um, you said that you're not you African American. You're black. I know. What do you call Jamaicans? They are Caribbean. No, no, no. What is it? Oh, okay. People that come from Jamaica, what do you call them? I low key don't even know. What do you mean you don't know? What do you call someone that comes from Jamaica? What is their ethnicity? They're Jamaican. Why don't you call them African Jamaicans? Because you're not African. They're not from Africa. Jamaicans? Okay, so when did Jamaicans get to Jamaica and when did Black Americans get to America? Jamaicans, I... oh my gosh, here you, you go again. You're starting to think a little bit now, aren't we? When did Jamaicans get to Jamaica? Answer the question. They just, they were just there, I guess. No, they came I don't know. Are they from Africa? What? I don't you know. don't know. Oh my you God. don't know that where the majority of the people from the transatlantic slave went to. Do you know? No. They went to the Caribbean and they went to Brazil, South America, and the small percentage of the people that came from the transatlantic slave trade that came to America got to America at the same time that Jamaicans that came from Africa got to Jamaica. So oh, how they just stop, stop. Hold on. I want you to let's let's. Stop. I'm having a teacher moment. How did Jamaica? How are Jamaicans just Jamaican and they're not from Africa, but melanated people from America are African American and they're from Africa. But both of those people got to the got to this side of the of the world at the same exact time. How are they Jamaican and we're African American? Explain that. Because we're in America, so. But they're in Jamaica. Okay. What 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 continent is Jamaica in? It's in. I don't know. You don't know what it's in North America, sweetheart. Okay. So then the the the, the thing that you would say if, if we're African Americans, then Jamaicans are African Jamaicans, right? I mean. What do you mean? I mean, if both of our people got to this side of the world at the same exact time, how were we African Americans and not just Americans, and how were they Jamaicans and not African Americans? Where does the, what are you, like, where, where is the confusion? I don't know, I guess because, like. Because what? I mean, that's a good question, honestly. I don't really know. That's the problem, because a lot of people are uneducated. Most of the, do you know. Black? Huh? So you don't, so you consider yourself just a black person? Just I'm, a not black, I'm a black American. Do you know the people that were classified on paper as black? Yes, but. Who, who are so, they? But you're African, though, because your ancestors are from Africa. What, okay, what ancestors do uh, people that, that come from uh, Brazil, where, where do their ancestors come from? I'm going to say Africa. People that come from Japan, where do their ancestors come from? I'm going to say uh, Mongols. No, they come from Africa because all life and people came from Africa, um, correct? Yeah. So by that logic, everybody's in Africa, correct? Right. So would you consider Jamaicans black? Or not, I'm sorry, would you consider Japanese people black? Oh, no. Why not if they all came from Africa? Like the logic that you just gave me. Because they got mixed in with other things. Just so like we did. We got mixed in with Native Americans and we got ni mixed in with the, with the portion of the population that came from Africa. So we got mixed in with Native Americans just like they got mixed in with other people as well. So by that logic, if you just, because you just use the logic with me, you just said you're black if you come from Africa. So if all life came from Africa, Asians, uh, uh, Indians, people from Australia, even Europeans, if all life that came to existence started in Africa, by that logic, all people are black, correct? Right. So then your logic isn't making any sense then. I guess not. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it for you. They don't like you. They not like us. No, no, no. They don't like us. The white man don't like you. The Spanish man don't like you. The Chinese man don't like you. The turkey man don't like you. If there was a chicken man, he wouldn't like your ass neither. Nobody likes you because you're a god and you're a goddess.
Learn to not like yourself, but learn to love yourself. Now, it's next sister. I, had to, I saw this repost on somebody's page, and I had to find her and go to her page. She's Nigerian. So at first, I was going to get on her bumper real, real hard. But I let it play through. There's some good points. But there's some points I might have to correct at the end because, yeah, she wild on some things. But for the most part, she's on, she's good. She just did not have enough in there for clarity's sake. Something that black people will always make sure to do and do well is pick and choose when they want to support their community and speak up for what's right, when they want to choose to respect themselves. Just a few days ago, people was hollering and screaming over Marcellus Williams. People was talking about the black boy who got the N-word carved into his body with a box cutter. People was talking about Sonia Macy who was killed because an officer lied and said she tried to um, throw boiling hot water on him. Y'all were up in arms and upset about that, which as, well, as we should be, you know what I'm saying? But y'all like to, like to pick and choose. Y'all like to pick and choose when stuff is okay and then when something go down, then y'all want to holler and, oh, that's not right, that's not right. At anything that is disrespectful to black people, to black culture, in the slightest, even if some people don't mind it, something be, should, should be said about it, someone should have a problem with it, y'all shouldn't pick and choose. This girl came across my For You page, she had like around 4,000 likes on this video, I'm pretty sure it's gonna blow up even more, but she basically said the dude that got on, that, the, the sound that's trend that's like, what you mean mama didn't teach you how to cook, mama ain't teach you how to, but you can, that's that sound, she basically said, and it's true because I'm from Texas, he's a Texas rapper, Mexican OT made that sound, if y'all don't know who Mexican OT is, he is a very big Trump supporter. He's a Texas rapper. He's a very big Trump supporter. He's even said that he doesn't believe his own people should be able to come to this country without getting registered and doing it the legal way. He doesn't believe in his people coming over here illegally. Not only that, but he's very racist. Like I think on like someday a black on Black History Month, he posted a Latina girl wearing box braids talking down on black women, talking about somehow Latina girls wear box braids better than black women. Just very weird. And he says the N word. And people were in her comments talk about something, but he's from Texas. Like and, and I'm from Texas. There's a lot of Hispanic people in Texas. Like it's a bunch of like Tex Mex, Mexican people everywhere. We're fine or the Mexican people just like black people like we brothers and sisters we cousins I don't know why y'all do that those people do not look at y'all as if y'all are their cousins those people don't even like y'all I'm not gonna speak for every Mexican person because not all Mexican people like that but I've been around some racist Mexican people and I'm telling you right now a lot of Mexican people do not like black people at all so I don't know why y'all think y'all are just cousins y'all are just oh we locked in like yeah y'all have the most insimilar regarding any other race you know what I'm saying but they they don't like y'all like that same as same as white people People's in the comments talk about some okay and like he still make good music. What does his political views have to do with his music? What are you talking about? We not just talk about his political views. The dude says the n-word. And that's why we talk about like y'all like to pick and choose. I don't care where you from. I, I really don't. There in no time should you ever allow anybody in your presence who is not black say the n-word around you because it just shows how little they respect you. They don't respect your people, therefore they don't respect you. They have no regards for respecting you at all. Not only is he making money and profiting off of a career in a genre made by black people rap was made by black people hip-hop and rap is popular and famous because of african americans not only is he benefiting from the inventions of african americans but he's using a word a slur but from by african americans about african americans he's benefiting off black culture already that's exactly what i'm talking about like y'all y'all love to pick and choose y'all love to pick and choose that's all y'all do pick and choose pick and choose pick and choose but let, but, let, but let your daughter or your little son come home from school talk about how one of the white kids or Hispanic kids called them the N-word. You're going to be up at that school as quick as, you, as quick as you know how. No, it's okay, right? No, it's okay. It ain't that big of a deal. We from Texas. We from Texas. A lot of Mexicans in Texas, they stay anyway. Oh, we like cousins. We like family. No, stop. One of, the, one of the things that my mom told me is that people do what you allow. If you allow people to disrespect you, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just, even if it's just a little bit, they're going to take that inch and turn it into a mile. Y'all letting these non-black rappers and non-black friends and non-black people that y'all have surrounding you say the N-word, call you the N-word and say it around you. You know, it may not be seen like as a, like looked at as a big deal or anything like big or anything to blow up over. They gonna take that inch, take it as a mile. I'll let people get too comfortable. That's one thing I can't stand. Like y'all cannot pick and choose. You gonna support the community and defend the community, support and defend your community all the way through. Don't be picking and choosing. The people she's talking about are the Coons and her fellow, and the fellow non-FBA. Typically the tethers. I I can't call it on for one video if she's a tether. I won't say she, I won't just stamp her tether right now. I need to see more content from her. But she's talking about the step and fetches, the sambos, the bed bucks, the bed winches, the divesters. Those are the ones who like to pick and choose. FBA, Financial Black Americans. Excuse me, we don't rock with that. We you saw the clip uh two videos ago with Mr. Organic. The, I guess I don't know if he was 
Latino or Asian or whatever you're supposed to be. The big dude, he said, nigga, he's like, you say nigga? And I don't know, you know, that's why I say what I say. You say, yeah, say it around them. Don't say it around me. He checked that immediately because that's how we get down. That's how we get down. We don't do all that. And I hate it that these cultures try to come for us. They be like, y'all, y'all not this, that, another. Have you heard Latinos just sit there and talk crazy to one another? You just be in the cut and they don't see you there? The N-word flies so much. Nigga, I had this chick over. They want, literally want to be us until we come around. They see me. Oh, that's... Oh. Now everybody... Everybody's speaking Spanish all of a sudden. I... Anyway, let's get back to the content. Free my people from the shackles of educating the oppressors. You are not the white man's teacher when it comes to racism. Why am I seeing black people on this app and on social media going live spending hours trying to explain racism to white people. If they aren't educated, they don't care. If they haven't do the, done the work, they don't care. We as black people have more important things to worry about than trying to educate the same people we are trying to get up from under. Like, what the fuck are we going to gain from that? Please explain that to me. It does absolutely nothing for our community. Besides centering white people in a conversation around racism, which we already fully understand. Like, y'all have got to stop wasting people's times and resources with shit like this, bro. Like, to me, when people do shit like this, it just shows me you don't really care about progressing. You just care about having a platform to have stupid ass discussions about shit that is not going to push forward our community in a positive light. Last night, I got a DM on my Instagram account for Bless the Rogues. And the person or bot at this point, I don't know. Um, there they were from Brazil and they spoke to somebody whose name I never heard about Hoodoo and that person referred them to me and they wanted me to share more information about Hoodoo with them so they can spread the word about hoodoo in Brazil because it's becoming popular and more people in Brazil want to practice it. So after telling them it's kind of like pointless uh, for them to even try to practice it because of why hoodoo exists and who created it and who it was created for, they still pushed. Like they still pushed back and was just like, I understand your concerns, but if we could just you know, talk. And so I immediately block them and like, l let this, let this be a warning. I will block your ass. I, I am not playing. I'm not arguing and I'm not reiterating or repeating myself. You will get blocked. But I'm also like, bro, there are so many indigenous and African diasporic traditions to practice in Brazil for people of Brazilian descent. That's just like, why are you asking a black American about hoodoo? And why, if they were telling the truth, is hoodoo, quote unquote, popular in Brazil? It's just, to me, it's just so odd how hoodoo has been left out of like these major ATR conversations. Like, and I don't say that to throw salt on anybody else's like religion, but trust me, I've been in, in a couple of these settings. And like hoodoo is not even on people's radar. But now all of a sudden you got people in other countries like wanting to practice hoodoo. And like Brazil ain't other country. It ain't the only country. Like somebody from Canada hit me up. My homegirl says somebody, uh, somebody from, from Germany reached out to her or something. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? In terms of hoodoo, hoodoo is not like other African derived religions. You just can't cut a check and get some items and then you in either you born in or you're not and if you're not mind your business they keep the culture family they keep the culture there's a young lady i saw today it's gonna be on the future clip the future comp honestly um later on this week probably she was translating tut she didn't realize she was translating tut i don't think she realized 
that she was. She was holding up certain objects and she was saying what it was in Tut. And thankfully, I went to the comments. There was a few people saying, don't translate, don't translate. And I put there, I thought translating was prohibited. And um, and she's a young girl. She's probably maybe 16, 17 years of age, 19 at the, you know, oldest. We have to be cognizant and ready to jump in and say, hey, hey, mm, we don't do that. We don't let the outsiders know what we're doing. We don't we don't bring them into the culture. The kumbaya energy, the hey man, we all family, we all one family, man. Just come together and love. And love and happiness and love. Yeah, we we did that. Every time we do, we've gotten short in the stick, we've gotten undermined, we've gotten uprooted, we've gotten put on our butts financially, socially, economically, um, mentally, spiritually, we've just been uprooted and left out to, to pasture. That's that's what happens, and we just sit there looking crazy for a while until we got bearings. We don't have to keep doing that. Gatekeep the culture. I'm starting to understand touch. I can't speak it, but I'm not so... I'm so guarded about the culture that even if I never learn to speak it, if I understand it enough to where I can, you know, kind of work with our brothers and sisters who do speak it, I'd rather never learn how to say it if that means the enemy can get a hold of the information, decipher it, and uproot us. I'm willing to go the rest of my life never speaking to it if that means that it protects the culture. So family, stay on code, and remember, we're protecting the culture. From here on out. Once upon a time in high school, I was in my U.S. history class, and I was cool with this white dude named Evan. I think his name was Evan. Anyways. We got to the slavery topic of the course, right? As we all know, I went to a predominantly white high school. At the end of the lesson, we had a worksheet, so we were able to talk and do our work with the folks around us. So while we're working on the worksheet, Evan goes, you know Africans sold other Africans into slavery. And I wasn't as educated then as I am now, but the only thing I had to say was, duh, blackness didn't exist then. And Evan was like, black people always existed. Black people sold other black people into slavery. I was like, yeah, before blackness existed. And I know he thought I was probably crazy, but Africa didn't exist until they got there, right? The whole continent, the whole unity, Africanists didn't exist. Blackness didn't exist until they got there. You were affiliated with your ethnic group, your tribe. There was no unity amongst races until white folks got to Africa. So yeah, other ethnic groups of Africans sold other ethnic groups of Africans into slavery because there was no common unity amongst black people your unity was to your tribe and your ethnic group but little 17 year old me couldn't say that the same way i just said that now and they just thought i was stupid and i wasn't able to get my point across yeah now remember when i said folks like jay-z and beyonce are not going to come for somebody like jaguar right because she has nothing to come for no receipts no evidence no assets and i said i asked a former attorney my father who said if he were advising a client he would not tell them to waste their time coming after somebody like Jaguar Wright. But who will B and J come for? Daniel Wright unexpectedly made several serious allegations about Jay Z and Beyonce during that interview. As I said in the moment, they were not present to respond or defend themselves. But now they have. Their lawyers contacted us to say that those claims were totally false and have no basis in fact. And we've therefore complied with the legal request to cut them from the original interview. Editing, editing interviews is not something we do lightly at a show called Uncensored. Uh, but, like the proverbial cries of fire in a crowded theatre, there are legal limits on us too. And we apologise to Jay-Z and Beyonce. Now, Piers, on the other hand, has a lot to lose. And from a journalistic standpoint, I'm sure next time he'll think twice. And we got to make sure we help black men understand. With all due disrespect, Magic Johnson, please shut the fuck up. Your son wear a size 16 pump. Shut up. You don't know nothing about black men. Ain't you itchy? Ain't you itchy? Fuck wrong with you. It's always the people with the worst motherfucking problems. You got easy E. Itchy and scratchy. And you telling us what we black men need to be doing. You should be making a fucking counter commercial. Then you stand up there with your goofy ass saying the same goofy shit. Your son was a size 16 b not Size 16 b not Pump. He wants stilettos, pumps in the club. Yeah. Don't you tell me shit. 
Like I'll follow you. Y'all celebrities getting out of hand with your with, 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 with what you think. You thought because you could do good business and dribble the basketball, you could tell us what the fuck to do. Boy, fuck you. Y'all want to hear something stupid? Listen to this. End abortion. He says he's 100% pro-life, believes abortion has turned aside in a place where we see children's an inconvenience, on and on and on. You also gave one of the quotes, I would certainly like to see abortion illegal nationally. He also said he was sympathetic to the view that a national ban is, would be necessary to stop women from traveling across states to obtain an abortion. So he's in favor of a sort of fugitive slave act to stop abortion. So he said that as well. He blames undocumented... Im Fucked up, ain't it? And I never thought I'd say this, but... She need to put her wig back on because that peroxide done fried her brain. These Democrats are desperate and they need the black vote. That's why they're using fear mongering and inflammatory language to get black folks to vote. And right now, Joy Reid is fighting for her job right now because she knows if we don't come out and support the Democrats, they have no use for her anymore. That's why she's tethering non sequitur arguments to our ancestors the way that she did. Bringing up the Fugitive Slave Act. Oh, they lost bad. They lost real bad. Plus, how was she holding Vance to what he said in the past while she defends Kamala for what she said in the past? That don't even make any sense to me. But I think she likes to reference our history to intentionally spit in our face because she knows we don't want her speaking for or on our behalf, and yet she still has a fucking platform. I mean, what she just said was so disrespectful to try to compare a Fugitive Slave Act that wasn't a choice to getting an abortion, which is the mother's choice. This woman done snapped and cracked. This is what panic looks like. Freak off levels of panic in the Democratic Party. Plus, this woman is a Congolese American, not a descendant of U.S. chattel slavery. I wish she would stop cosplaying us and using our history for political capital. Because I'm already not voting Democrat. She doesn't have to convince me anymore. Because at this point, you can go to hell, Joy Reid. Go to hell. Black family, heads up. I didn't know this was going on, and I want you guys to see it. Uh, check with your children, your nieces, nephews, grandchildren, whoever you lock in with, whoever you that's under your care or that you can get to to make sure this ain't happening at date school and little weird little patches and things like that going on. And they doing to our babies get, and probably trying to get them hooked on narcotics, low key. Two teachers and two aides have been suspended so far still. They don't feel comfortable sending their kids back to school. What happened with the sticker? The sticker, um makes me fall asleep. This is four-year-old Lane Luviano. She's the one that broke this case open in September when she snuck one of her sleepy stickers out of the classroom. She kind of pulled up her little shorts and said, Mom, look, this is my sleeping sticker. And I was like, the what? When Lane's mom, Lisa, saw the sticker, she thought it was strange and asked her daughter about it. And the teacher gives it to you where she put it? On my arm. On your arm? Which part? Point to it. Right up there? Yeah. And what's it look like? Um, sleeping with a moon on it. Lane's dad says he's known something was wrong since school first started. Two o'clock in the morning, I'm hearing her. The room, some noise in the room, and I'm going over there. She's still up. And so she gives you the sticker. You put the sticker on and it makes you tired? Yeah. Wow. And all the kids get them? Yeah. They never notified the parents. So Lisa took matters into her own hands. She reached out to the other parents in Lane's class, sent them pictures of the patch to see if their kids were getting the stickers too. I showed it to my four-year-old um, and she said, yes, that's that's the sleepy sticker. Melissa Guilford immediately went online to research the sticker. Sleep Z patch. Mm. Okay, so, and if you read the ingredients on them, it has a lot of, I mean, it's just things I've never even heard of. And they're giving them drugs to make them sleep, to keep them quiet. Najala Abdullah tells us she'd noticed changes in her son, who told her he'd been getting the stickers too. She says he'd been crying, stopped eating, and was bringing home lunches that he hadn't touched. The parents shared with us an email they received from Northgate Crossing Elementary's principal today. The email states two of the school staff members were put on leave after they allegedly administered sleeping supplements to students on September 24th. The email also states the Spring ISD Police Department is investigating. 
So, family, I, I put this clip in here because I was like, hmm. There's so much history we still don't know about. Shout out to Tariq and the Hidden Colors series and how it really broke down a lot for us. But he's one man. He can't, he can't do it by himself. So, shout out to his brother who's also doing uh, his part to make us uh, aware of certain things we may not know about. Not everybody knows about everything. All right, so lock in on this one. And then we got one more clip. Pastor Wilkins of Chasing Our History, you're looking at the memorial of the Germantown Revolt of 1811. Look at the heads on a stake. These heads are on a stake just like Rome, 70 AD. They chopped off the heads, they placed them on a stake, and they lined them up as far as you could see from Jerusalem and beyond. This is the Germantown Revolt. If you look close enough, the red scarves are those who were the commanders. These are the warriors that were behind them. The, the, the slaves were trying to escape. They fought the Americans and the French. In the process of fighting them, they were defeated. Most of their problems were strategy. It wasn't strength or desire, but strategy. They ran out of ammo. They was holding their own until they ran out of ammo. What did the Americans and the French do? They was causing a tumult, sounds from all directions. And they was letting them fire ammo until they were out. And then they butchered them after all that happened. We are at the Whitney Plantation in Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana, the Whitney Plantation. This is the memorial of the Germantown Revolt. I'm going to take you to the actual spot here in moments where these slaves actually fought for their freedom. Pastor Wilkins of Chasing Our History. Shalom. We'll see you in a minute. All right, this last clip, I want you guys to have a little bit of comedy. I'm going to start trying to do that, implement a little bit of comedy because we are so inundated with one being black to being on cold and having to constantly watch our surroundings and our areas that it can, it can be kind of overwhelming. So just a little bit of comedy. I thought it was dope. So I hope you enjoy it. Be one. What are you doing? Could you just calm Get, down? Okay. No, you're calm breaking down. and entering. You didn't even knock. Look, you're doing a lot of this and I need you to, okay? Hey, 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 hey. No, hey, no, hey, hey, no, hey, hey, no, hey, no, hey, hey, no, hey, no, hey, no, hey, hey, no, hey, no, hey, no, Okay, look, off okay, of my look. Lips. okay. Your kind gets arrested all the time, so your you might. Kind? Yes, ma'am. Your son is skipping school. He's a baby. So, why are you here? Because you're black. I mean, your son. I've been recording you this whole time. You've been recording me? Recording. If he's doing what he's doing, you don't get away. If, you keep going, if, you don't get if he's away. going and you're going, you could you just calm this. down for a second? Can you calm down? Okay, you're not listening. If there is so much going on, and I need you all this <laughs> to stop. You're doing a lot. You mean I'm doing a lot? What is all of this? No, man. Get, get okay, away okay, from look. This is pepper spray. Oh, I don't want to have to pepper oh, spray you. This is the Nelson Mandela pepper spray. Just for your it. folks. The Nelson Mandela pepper spray. Who are your folks? You you don't want to know no, my folks. Who are your folks? My folks like to ride around on horses, torches, crosses, things like that. I don't want to be disrespectful to you Negroes. I mean, black, I mean, Excuse monkeys. Me? That gun. I need you, you to back up. I'm going talking. to pepper spray you. You got five seconds. Five, four. Three, I'm back. I'm back. two, no, I just want to. Oh stop, stop resisting. Stop resisting. Oh She's cursing me out and she has a weapon. I'm going to have to tase her. Stand up. I can't. Yes, you can. No, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens your freaking people. Ain't that right? If you enjoyed the work we do here, I would just ask for you to do one of a few things. Like this video and comment. Share this video to one of your social media platforms, open, public. Consider getting a shirt. Consider hitting my storefront on Amazon, grabbing something you need off Amazon. Consider consider one of my affiliate links and just helping your, your brother out, all right? Peace, be one.